This original video idea and credit 100% goes to the graph lounge. But here's three infamous graffiti beefs. Number one, Pear and Kez 5. Sometimes when you're trying to take over your own city with graffiti and try to become the most seen and well-known writer around, there might be a chance of someone jumping in to take that spotlight off of you, which that in itself may get under someone's skin. But when this said writer who is about to try to take over your city has just arrived from out of town, things can get quite messy. Kez 5, a well-known graffiti writer from New York City wasn't too happy when Pear, a well-known writer from the other side of America, randomly stumbled into New York and started to try to take over the streets with graffiti. Kez 5 made it clear that he wasn't too happy by simply capping every single Pear throwy tag and piece that he saw. Kez 5 made sure everyone saw that he was straight up dissing Pear by taking photos of his disses and putting them up online. This ultimately led to Pear fighting back and Pear proceeded to cap Kez 5 right back. This back and forth charade continued for quite a while until eventually I guess they sorted it all out. Now for me being from Australia I didn't see this ongoing beef but I have seen something similar and it's very interesting to see it all unfold on the walls right in front of you. Number 2. Cope 2, Utah and Ether. Almost everyone has heard of Cope 2 for being an OG graffiti writer from New York, but when the words snitch and rat was started to be thrown around on the internet and in person regarding Cope, people then started forming their opinions about him. And these opinions and thoughts are still widely voiced even to this day, which makes this graffiti rivalry a famous one indeed. Utah and Ether took a massive disliking to Cope after discovering that Cope had allegedly spoke to police about Utah and Ether, or in other words, snitched on them which is a no-go in the graffiti scene. Cope had obviously denied the snitching rumours despite there being alleged actual proof of the facts that he actually indeed snitched and there was official paperwork. This all funneled into the point where Cope 2 actually had paid other writers to cap Utah and Ether's work seemingly all over the world with such remarks as snitch and some even trying to copy the Cope throwy style for him. There was a lot of back and forth dissing on the internet between Cope 2, Utah and Ether which is what probably played a massive massive role into why it was such a popular and well-known beef situation. And at the same time, the fact that a lot of people already knew who Cope 2 was, and of course a lot of people also know about Utah and Ether. Number 3. Cap and everyone. If you've seen the movie Star Wars, it perfectly explains what Cap's motives to capping everyone was really all about. Cap legit capped everything on the train system back in the old New York City days, which is why some people think capping someone is called capping because Cap created the capping someone genre part of graffiti. I don't know if there's any truth to that, but it's a pretty cool theory. But anyways, Cap was fed up of seeing all the nice pieces all over the trains and he wanted to send a message and he had the mentality of quantity over quality. One throwy on every train car instead of one piece on every third train or so. And considering all these trains at the time were always covered in graffiti, the only real way to stand out, from Cap's perspective at least, was to cap everyone. It didn't matter who you were, he would cap you anyway. And it sure got everyone talking because it wasn't too popular to just do throwies and cap everyone back then. Generally if someone was going to cap you there was a reason behind it, but Cap didn't really have a personal problem with anyone he was capping. He was just capping anyone, which obviously obviously made Cap stand out. But nowadays doing throwies and capping is a major part of the graffiti scene. But back then obviously all the writers were hating the disrespect Cap was showing to anyone and everyone, which made all these writers meet up one night and discuss the problem Cap was posing within the OG graffiti scene. Despite everything being against Cap, Cap stayed relatively safe from any physical danger due to him being in the motorcycle gang from the Bronx, which most likely played a big part in the infamous graffiti boomers agenda, mentality and overall prospect. This last one is a beef altercation worth telling you guys about and this one is a perfect example of how serious graffiti beef can get and how far some people are willing to take graffiti beef in terms of seriousness. This is the little altercation between PJ and PG3. The beef between these two writers ultimately turned into a group versus group type beef altercation. It boiled down to PG3 getting frustrated over the fact that PJ was capping heaps of graffiti. PG3 was trying to find PJ for quite some time to try have a chat and get to the bottom of the repetitive capping that was happening. After failing to find PJ or set up a time to speak to him, PG3 thought of a plan to try get PJ's attention and got to the point of using dirty tactics like threatening PJ's family members in an attempt to flush PJ out of hiding to figure out the beef. PJ copped the wind of these threats and went to go out and confronted the group of riders making these threats towards his family. The group of riders allegedly all pulled out weapons when they finally met up and these weapons were including pew pews. PJ 
also apparently pulled out a pew pew and let a shot off and this shot hit PG3. PJ actually did time for this altercation but then again everyone that was involved has their own side of the story so what really happened that day will never really be known. Grab a sticker pack they're only 10 bucks thanks for watching have a great day and have a good one.